Building a static mix is my personal favorite stage of the mixing process. Let's unpack why I do it, how I do it, and a few tips and tricks that are gonna help you to create the perfect balance. Let's dive straight in. Okay, so the static mix, I mean, it's really just a fancy name for balancing out your tracks. Um, and the nice thing about it, and what I love about it, is its sheer simplicity. No plugins, you're just going to be armed with your faders and your pan knobs to balance out your mix before you start bringing in plugins, before you start making more choices. You just got two choices to make to balance out your piece of music as best as possible. And the great thing about performing a stack mix is it really forces you to use your ears and listen and it really helps you to get familiar with the mix super quickly. And in turn it's encouraging you to get used to a mix method that you can work through every single time rather than just opening up a project, just chucking plugins on, bringing some faders up here and there and everything ending up in a mess. This encourages you to go through the stages of mixing methodically which is going to get you much better results. So how do I perform a static mix? And everyone's got a slightly different way of doing this, but I like to kick things off by grabbing all of my faders and bringing them down all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to bring up uh, next my focal point of the mix, and I'm going to build my mix around that focal point, a bit like how a football manager might build a team around their star player. Uh, and invariably, more often than not, it's going to be my vocal, unless I'm doing uh, an instrumental piece. It's going to be my lead vocal that's going to be the star and the main focus point of my mix. So I'm going to bring that all the way up to unity, up to zero. And then I'm going to bring in the other elements of my mix and start bringing in a static mix, a balanced mix around my vocals as best as possible. A little story about my neighborhood. There's trouble in the streets, it don't look too good. Free the beast, I know we got life, this is day release. It's community cops, gangs and knives will make it stop. Someone please free the beast. Cops, gangs and knives will make it stop. Someone please free the beast. Oh no, I really don't think so. Who's these guys? Community cops. Okay, so I've spent some time on my static mix. I brought my faders up. Next, I'm going to look at some panning and uh, just want to chat through some panning choices that I'm going to make. So I've got in this song uh, two Strat guitars just here. Um, which are uh, featuring the verse. And as the song progresses, when we get past the bridge and into the chorus, uh, they're joined with a couple of Les Pauls that are going to provide some real oomph and body. Let me just show you how that works. I really don't think so. Who's these guys? Community cups. So they're really coming in to drive through that chorus. So what I'm going to do with the panning is rather than go really hard left and right straight out with my verse guitars, uh, I'm going to bring them in to around um, three quarters, so uh, 74 left and right to be super exact. And then what I'm going to do with my Les Pauls is bring them really hard left and right, so that when I come to that part of the chorus where they're bringing in the extra body and push, um, I'm actually giving the listener a bit more width too. So I'm going to go those, f put those hard left and right, and then this sounds like this from the bridge. Do you want to even try? Just one taste, don't walk by it from your face. I can see you thinking, oh no, I really don't think so. Who's these guys? Community cups, games and knives. And it's just going to open out that mix and push that uh, chorus. Uh, further along. When it comes to the backing vocals, I'm not going to go so wide as I am with those Les Paul guitars. I really um, think about cradling the vocal with those uh, backing vocals and supporting the vocal. So I'm going to go, um, uh, let's just check out these two vocals with a much tighter pad. These guys, community cups, gangs and knives will make it stop. Someone please. And then I've also got these more choral R's, which I'm going to have a little bit wider. Let's take a listen to the mix. I know you got life. Who's these guys? Community cops. Uh, Gangs and knives will make it stop. Uh, Someone please free the beast. I know we got life. This is day release. At this point with the static mix, what I'm going to go and do is take a break. And I find that really super important. Give yourself a break. Go and do something else. Now, here's a real top tip. When you come back to listen to the static mix that you've done, 
put it on but go in another room and listen ambiently it really really helps even listen to it but do something else you know polish a tv or uh, i don't know do something quiet obviously don't start doing the vacuuming but um, do something else that just distracts your mind a little bit so you can hear in the background you want to be listening f out for is anything standing out you know the guitars coming over the vocals that's the main thing with a song like this is the vocal coming through uh, does everything sound as it should? Make a couple of notes if you need to, and then just come back into the mix and adjust accordingly. Spend a little bit more time on it. This is an area of the mix I do not like to rush. I like to take my time and really get the balance uh, as good as I feel possible before I start adding more plugins into the mix. If you want to learn more about an effective mix method, I've got a free seven steps mix method guide. You can grab it below this video. Also want to offer you 10% off all of my courses with the coupon code YouTube 10. You'll find the link to my courses below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe here on YouTube for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time.